Hi right, guys. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to charge the Maxwell supercapacitors. So these guys here are 2.7 volts a piece. They are basically the uh, 3000 series, so they are 3000 farads a piece. When you basically wire them in series, they'll get you uh, to your 12 volt, right, when you add them up. But mathematically, you divide the 3000 farad capacity by the number of capacitors in the series. So what we have here basically per bank, we have 500 farads. We have a total of six banks, so if you add everything up, this is 3000 farads worth of capacitor at the 12 volt range. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up the banks together and then I'm going to use this intelligent battery charger that I use for my RC car to charge them up and I'll show you guys how to do that. Okay, so the first thing I've done is I've hooked up my voltmeter to these guys. They're supposed to be empty and you can see here when hooked up, we've got basically 0.1617 volts on this uh, set of capacitors on this bank. And now when hooking up this bank, we're at about the same level. So we're safe to go ahead and hook these up in parallel so we could charge them together. That way we don't have to do the banks individually. Okay, so I've got the two banks wired up in parallel. I have the positive to positive, negative to negative. And now with my voltmeter, when I hook it up, you can see we've got 0.16 across both banks. So the capacitors are now basically balanced across the two banks. The next thing I'm going to do is hook up my battery charger, the intelligent battery charger, to the capacitor. I'm then going to use the manual programming features available in it to basically set the parameters of what voltage I want to reach, how much total amperage I want to push into the capacitors, and basically with this one I have the ability to tell it if I want it to basically take a pause every few minutes, every 30 minutes to let the capac capacitors cool down if they heat up. I don't think that will be a problem, um, but uh, I'll start the process and then we'll see how the capacitors do after 10 minutes and I'll report on that. Okay, so we've got uh, two banks hooked up in parallel. We've got our voltmeter hooked up just for reference. And on the intelligent battery charger, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go with the nickel cadmium battery program on mine. I'm gonna basically uh, select the current I wanna feed to these. So I'm going to do the nickel cadmium charge and I'm going to start off with a low current, let's say 2 amps. I want to see how the capacitors do, see if they warm up. I doubt 2 amps is going to phase them at all, but I'd rather be safe than start starting out. So let's start the, the process. And when I set up the, uh, the program here, I actually set a limit for how many amps it could feed into the, into the caps to make sure I don't overfeed them. So right now the charger is pushing 0.35 volts and you can see our capacitor bank slowly going from 0.17 to 0.25 and this will start raising as of course the capacitors get filled. So I expect this will take quite a long time here. Um, you can see the counter for how long the, uh, the charger has been charging and basically how many total amps have been uh, put into the, the battery bank. I believe these are milliamps. Um, so I'll check on these guys periodically to make sure they don't get hot and see if I could set, set, um, basically increase the, the amperage rate on them. Sorry, here is the, the amps that have been put into it so far. All right, these are going up, so I'll continue recording as these increase in voltage. So we've been charging for about 10 minutes or up to 0.5 volts. So I'm going to go ahead and increase the amount of current I'm going to be pushing into them. I think going up to maybe let's say about 5 amps should be safe. Um, I believe my charger is capable of 6 amps. Um, so by going at 5 amps the charger will be under its uh, kind of maximum output margin. So there shouldn't be anything happening with it even though it has a fan I want to make sure it doesn't overheat. And uh, the cap should be able to take that amount of charge without an issue. They haven't gone uh, warm at all, 
so they're not being phased. Again, there's quite a few uh, caps here and pushing 5M, so all of them divided by, what is it, 30 caps, uh, they're barely seeing a trickle charge each one. So I'm gonna restart the program at 5 amps. Charger's doing the battery check, and now we're pushing 5 amps. And you can see uh, it's now pushing at 1.09 volts, and the caps are at 0 0.6. So it's really trying to, to get that, that juice in there by increasing the voltage to push that much more amperage through. So hopefully this will speed up the process significantly, but I'll keep an eye on them again, and uh, and hopefully these get charged up, uh, you know, within a few hours. Okay, so pu public service announcement. I'm assuming if you're watching this video, you know exactly what these supercapacitors are and what they're for. What? What? These banks are basically going in a high SPL car audio application and they're going to be paired with lithium batteries. So, the uh, service announcement is, if you don't know what these are, do not mess with them. Their ability to charge and discharge at incredible rates is incredibly dangerous. If I were to take this fully charged capacitor bank and basically put one wire on the negative, one, one on the positive, I'd probably melt the wire and start a fire. Um, their ability to discharge all their energy is just incredible that's why they're using car audio because they supplement even lithium batteries which actually have a decent output um, they supplement them by basically feeding the system the extra voltages it needs as the amplifiers drain uh, the system so again be incredibly careful with these try not to accidentally connect positive and negatives cross connect or any of that very dangerous um, Next up, why on earth am I even taking the time to make a video on how these things are being charged? Simple answer is because your ability to charge and discharge is so high, if you were to connect this to, let's say, your car battery, these things would suck up that 12.9 resting voltage so fast, we'd be in the same dilemma where we're probably going to melt some wires, uh, basically start welding things together these things will suck up the juice and load up and just cause sparks and all kinds of stuff which you don't want so you have to take the precautions like i'm doing here to charge them safely and slowly and then take the precautions to make sure that these are basically sealed and don't end up touching the grounds on your car or anything else that they shouldn't okay so we've been charging for about an hour and 45 minutes and we've pushed a total of 8 amp hours to these guys. The voltage is at 9.5 and once we're all topped off at around 12.8 volts, 12.9 volts, I'm going to hook up this fan to it. It's a server fan, 1.5 amps, so pretty good drain. I'm going to hook them up to the capacitors and we're going to see how long they could power this fan and what kind of drop we get in voltage. That should give us a good idea of, you know, about how much current you can pull before you're, you're going down into 12.5s or so from 12.9. Okay, so we're at 12.96, almost 13. And we ended up putting, let's see here, um, I'd say about 14 amp hours into this guys it took almost uh, two and a half to three hours of charging because we messed around from two to four and then five amps next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a load test to see just how much capacity we could get going from let's say 12.95 to 12.5 there uh, there are a few ways I could do this one I could show you the math right pretty straightforward Two, I could use this battery charger to actually discharge the, um, the caps down to 2.5. Or three, go back to my trusty server fan here, which pulls 1.5 amps. I think I'm going to do this one because it's a lot more fun than the math or using that one. And you guys get to see a real life test. 
So what I'm going to do is, first of all, we're going to test the amperage on this to make sure 1.5 amps is accurate as stated. So I'm just going to go ahead and wire my voltmeter up into a different position. And once I have all that, I'll continue the video. Okay, so I've got the negative of the cap going into my fan. And the positive of the, of the fan going into the negative of my voltmeter and it's hooked up to read up to 10 amp load. I then have the positive right here. I'm going to hook it up to the cap bank and we're going to see just how much this fan draws. So we've got 1.1 amp draw at 13 volts. So let's go ahead and do that and let's see how many amp hours we could get going down to about 12.5 all right let's get this show going we're starting at about 12.85 volts at 1.1 amp load let's see Okay, we're coming up on 12.5. We've been running for a little over 11 minutes. Now let's, this is still going, so let's say 12.30 here. 12 minutes and 30 seconds to go from 12.85 to 12.5. Okay guys, very basic rough math here. Rear world though. So we have 12.5 minutes. And if we divide that by 60, we get 20% of an hour past in the time that we tested. The amp, sorry, the fan drew 1.1 amps an hour. So if we basically multiply 20% times that, we can see that we pulled 0.22 amp hours going between 12.85 to 12.5. So within 0.35 volts difference. Now let's go ahead and plug this formula in and say, if we had a 14 volt system that we charge the caps to, how many amp hours can we pull until the caps would go down to 12 volts? Simple. Doing the math, we can see that we could pull 1.3 amp hours from these caps going from 14 volts down to 12 volts. Straightforward, based on our fan test. Okay, so now let's look at the math outside of our rear world test. The formula says that for a given farad, in this case 3,000 farads are bank, we could do 3,000 amps for an entire second and go from one volt down to another. So in this case, if we want to go down from 14 volts down to 12 volts, we have to do this for two seconds. So the way this works is we basically have two seconds and then we divide that by 60 seconds times 60 minutes in an hour. So this gives us the percentage of seconds two seconds within an hour. We then multiply that by our 3,000, which is 3,000 amps per second, and we see that according to the 100% efficient formula, we should get 1.66 amp hours going down from 14 volts to 12 volts according to the formula. So our rear roll test and the formula are off slightly. Again, we had resistance in our circuit because the fan, of course, is in 100% efficient. We have resistance happening, but overall, we're pretty accurate. 